Okay. I'm back on. Hello, thanks for staying. Let's see if that's any better. Tonight, I'm drinking hot apple cider. It is delicious. Okay, cool. So, instead of reviewing it on the book, although the book is very pretty, it's kind of hard for you all to see. Um, so, I'm going to uh, look at the web version. It looks like my stream just dropped again for a second. Sorry, man. Yeah, hot apple cider is really good. So, so we're gonna learn about the red board platform first, and do all the introduction base plate assembly stuff. So, the DIY revolution. Understanding electronics is a core literacy. That's awesome. Yep, opens up a world of opportunities in the field of robotics, Internet of Things, engineering, fashion. Medical industries, environmental sciences, performing arts, and more. Cool. Redboard Quick is your development platform. At its roots, a small portable computer, known as a microcontroller. Let's see. Various outputs. is one of a magnitude of development boards based on the AT Mega 328 microprocessor. It has 14 digital input output pins, six of which can be PWM outputs. Um, I'm not sure what PWM stands for. Um, six analog outputs, a 16 megahertz crystal oscillator, a USB connection, a power jack, and a reset button. Pulse width modulation. Thank you. Thank you, V.E. Kruger. Um, You'll learn more about each of the Redboard's features as you progress through this guide. Okay. Baseplate assembly. These images are low resolution. Therefore, we will switch to the real life one. Okay. Which is also kind of low resolution. So it says, to begin, collect your parts. The Redboard, Redboard, Included screwdriver, a base plate, and two base plate screws. Oh, nice. Zen is a uniquely talented man. Um, so we didn't need this yet, but I still put the batteries in place. Um, here's the red board. Here's the included screwdriver. And breadboard, which is here. <laughs> this is should say like loser or something across the top. Um, learning is fun. So here's our breadboard. So we needed a breadboard and then there's also like a black thing. It's a nice little case it gives us. That's cool. So, here's these. I'm going to put the battery pack back. Alright. So, first thing is to remove plastic. There's a lot of plastic here, but I guess that's fine. Take out my handy dandy utility blade here. All scratched up. Feels nice and sturdy though. Kind of a nice. your beams power all I don't even I don't even get this joke 
Pete Kruger. I don't understand. I tried, but I, I just don't get, I don't get it. Is it, you mean Beat Saber character? Is that what you mean? I'm sorry, I'm ruining your joke. Peel the adhesive backing off the breadboard. Carefully outline the breadboard over its spot on the base plate. Text on the breadboard should face the same direction as the text on the base plate. It's convenient. So we're gonna... Oh, yeah. There, that's like a knockoff. Rechargeable battery brand. <laughs> Make sure there's no dust. Make sure to get lots of oil from your hands before you put the adhesive on. That's key. So we're gonna line this up. I, I didn't have all the requisite parts to that joke for sure. How is Beam Saber? Good name for something. Okay. Right. Not sure what these little tabs on the side mean. I didn't know if I needed to have this like in a certain spot here. This is probably just a general breadboard though, so I'm sure it's not a big deal. myself with. Hmm. So bad news gang. I only got two screws and there's four screw spots. Oh, um, I, did I not really explain it super well? Um, so I'm putting together the SparkFun Inventors Kit. So this is basically, I did kind of skip that, didn't I? Um, it's basically a microcontroller that's going to allow me to learn enough in order to start to do some like Internet of Things type stuff. Basically, my end goal is to be able to make my own, like, automated... I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to make my own automated greenhouse uh, this winter, and instead of just, like, buying a $30 temperature sensor, um, a friend of mine told me just to get the dang kit and actually learn it, because once I get used to it, it'll be a lot cheaper to make automated things later. Yeah, I really, really don't know. Dump out these screws here. Pretty standard um, SparkFun branded screwdriver. Nothing too special here. A little, a little loose. Put that up by the microphone. See if you can hear that. Um, This is like barely the right screwdriver for this project. Um, so this screwdriver is not really what I need. I am going to use the screwdriver I just carry with me in my pocket all the time. Um, this is just like a simple Stanley little double-ended thing. Hey Zen Haver, you are definitely the guest of honor. <sighs> yeah, there's a lot of play. I think it's just, it's trash. Um, so I kind of figured I'm just going to eventually have all of my little pocket gadgets out as I try to do this because I don't know how to do anything without them. So I'm just swapping my screwdriver head here. With my Nipix. I'm gonna put this in here. So Zen, thank you for joining tonight. Um, 
Kyle, I don't, I don't, I don't play any of these games. I don't know these jokes. Um, so, what effect? Do I need to be really concerned about static electricity when I'm touching these kinds of boards, or is that not as important of a thing? Open form collaborative fiction game. What even is that genre? I'm not even sure what that is. Okay. Pretty heavily coated and protected. Thank you. Okay, looks like we got step one complete. I'm gonna put my screwdriver away. Don't think I'll be needing it so soon. I'm gonna need like a garbage bin. Avoid touching components directly. It should be good if you handle the board by the edges. That's cool. Make sure I don't have any screws in here that I'm supposed to be using. And I'm gonna... If I just keep asking Vec to explain his jokes, he's just gonna make more of them. Okay, so that's complete. Oh, look at this diagram. That's beautiful. I really like the printing quality in this kit. It's really quite nice. So we have, okay, let's see if we can, we can do some of this. See how this will work. Um, so I was showing um, the person who I work with at Normandale um, my new camera setup for this project, and they were like, it looks like a toilet seat. And uh, they're not wrong, but it still made me kind of sad. Um, um, Kyle, it's, V.E. Kruger, I don't even know what you even mean by any of that. So, okay, we're gonna go through, so A, this is the barrel jack here. <laughs> That's like not even zoomed in that much. Um, so this is the barrel jack here. Power USB port, right there. So, LED, uh, RX receiving shows when the USB to serial chip is receiving data bits from the computer. So that's C, so that's um, right there. No more toilet. Is it? Is it not actually helping? There, that's probably, probably helping a little bit, right? So there's the Rx, that's when it's receiving. Tx is when it's transmitting. Right there. And onboard LED pin D13. So it's connected to digital pin 13, can be controlled in your program and is great for troubleshooting. So that's that pin 13 right there. Pins AREF, ground, digital, Rx, Tx, SDA, SCL. So that's F. So I think that's right here. So yeah, there's um, SCL, SDA, AREF, ground, and then 13, which will connect to that. Power LED, emitted when the board is connected to a power source. So that's G, which is right. Right there. Reset button. H is up here. I have a reset button up there. ISP header in system programming header. Use to program AT Mega 328 directly. It will not be used in this guide, so that's I. 
So that's right here. So we're not going to use those. That's direct power. RF, RFU, number K, or letter K, reserved for future use. So this is just telling me that this one right here is completely useless. Not useless for anything. And the quick connector, L. So this is like a fancy kind of connector right here, whatever this does. Oh, that's a lot. A lot of stuff. Um, let's keep moving here, though. I just, I really like the printing quality on this. This is really nice how, how good this little guide is. I kind of want this as like a poster that can I can just take out. But let's see. Maybe it is later. Anatomy of a breadboard. Breadboard is a circuit building platform that allows you to connect multiple components without using a soldering iron. So the power bus. So each side of a breadboard has a pair of vertical connectors marked minus and plus. So minus and plus. Here, so this is the minus and the plus. Um, um, each sign, each minus sign runs ground to anywhere in the vertical column. This runs a ground everywhere. Is it is it power anywhere? Okay. And I learned a little bit of this from my other kit, but not a, not a ton. Um, horizontal rows. Each set of five sockets marked with A through E and F through J are connected. So these are all connected. So each of these rows are connected, I believe, right? Yeah, okay. So each of the rows. Kind of like a spreadsheet. I like those. Center line. Line divides the breadboard in half, restricting electric electricity to one half or the other. Okay. The Ar Arduino. Am I saying that right, Zen? Arduino? I. This is not a good spelling word for me. I do a real bad job with that one. Get this toilet out of the way. Um, so I have trouble spelling that word, but Arduino. In order to get the bread breadboard up and running, you'll need to download the newest version of Arduino software from Arduino.cc. Okay, so let's do that. So Arduino slash downloads. Why didn't that just work? That was embarrassing. Okay. Download the Arduino IDE. That. Um, sorry, gang. I'll donate later. Um, so that's downloading right now. I think anyway, right? Is that to that download? The hell. Um. Y'all should let me know if you want me to skip a song if it's awful. I went with the synthwave um, thing. But if any of them are terrible, let me know. I have to get it from the Microsoft Store. Oh boy. Let's see how this goes. Can I just get it? Oh, I think I know what's happening. U Block is doing stuff. Yep. I don't think I've ever logged in on this computer. So let's see how this goes. I'm just gonna go full screen here. I 
kind of figured this first go would be a little rocky, but um, we'll see if I can get the software installed. Oh, perfect. Great. Um, yeah, awesome. Thanks. Thanks, gang. I just, I just want it. Why can't I just get it? Can't I just get a download? That's frustrating. Like, just, just give me the software. Stop, like, making me go through these hoops. Yeah. Oh, no, something happened. I remember a joke about that. Like, it made, like, someone sounded like someone pooped their pants or something like that. Oh my god. I don't want to do this right now. Let's see if it'll let me just like not. And I can use it. Someone was that was it me? I don't remember. Hey, we got it to work. Sick. Yes, allow access. Um, oh, 10-4, gotcha. All right, so we now have, la -da! cool. It's working. So we got that up and running, so okay. So now, it says, now that I've got that installed, in order to Redboard hardware to work on your computer's operating system, you need to install a few drivers. Please go to sparkfun.com slash ch340 for specific instructions on how to install the USB drivers on your computer. So that's where we're gonna go next. Go to com slash CH340. Okay, how to install CH340 drivers. I hope this doesn't require a reboot. That would be a bummer. Okay, how to install CH340 drivers on multiple operating systems if you need. Okay. Um... So is this basically just telling me that I, so it's saying these operating systems have, have the CDC drivers pre-installed, which means you shouldn't need to install any extra software. However, there are a wide range of operating systems out there. So if you run into driver problems, you can get the archive drivers before. So is this just telling me I don't have to install any drivers that I can just get it running because of, because of my windows? I think it's, I think that's what it's telling me. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a good plan. Try it without it. Okay, connect the red board to a computer. Use the USB cable provided in the SIK to connect the breadboard uh, to one of your computer's USB ports. So we're going to put this up here in our magic box again and see what we got. Lots of things. Here we go.
Um, all the shaking is from uh, my my wife walking around upstairs. The camera is connected to a um, like a little metal support. It has a bit of spring to it, so it just vibrates the whole camera when she walks around. Whoops. Okay. Put this in. Uh, so, here's a question for you all. I have all these like plastic bags and stuff from this kit. Do I just, do I keep any of them? Do I toss them? It seems like a lot of extra plastic, but I guess it's good to keep things separate, right? So maybe keep the plastic? I don't really know. What do you typically do? I feel like this should tell you, like, not that I would have read it, I probably skimmed it. Um, but it should say, like, hey, you should hang on to your plastic, or... Who cares, nerd? Keep a bag full of baggies? Okay. Zenhaver says to keep them. Oh, there we go. Some shakies. I will keep this then. Flatten the air out of it. Set it aside. Okay. Nice. Like a six foot cable. Slick. Trust in the Zen. Okay. Absolutely. Let's, uh, let's not have everyone look at the back of my neck. Uh, gotta get up to plug this in. <laughs> at least I'm not throwing it away. Keeping it forever for no reason, but it is better than just tossing it, I suppose. Okay, so here we have our USB cable. I, I, I can respect that, 10 beat for sure. Absolutely. So connect it to a computer. So let me get this twist out of here. Just the whole thing fries. You can stuff them into crevices between studs. <laughs> That's a good idea, uh, V.E. Kruger. That's good. Yep. That's really, that's efficient. Energy efficient. So, things are happening. Our number 13 light is blinking, as well as the on light. Okay. So each of the circuits you will build are in the SparkFun Inventors Kit, has an Arduino, has an Arduino code sketch already written for it. This guide will show you how to manipulate that code and control your hardware. So we need to go to SIK code. So we're gonna go back here. So we're gonna go to, so sparkfun.com slash SIK code, version 4.1, open this up, and extract it, um, right, that's what I was doing, So this is the example code, I think. I think that's what it was telling me. That's good, good to have. I like the number of projects in here. Like it's not completely overwhelming. Um, at how many projects there are. Because I, I wasn't hoping for like 60. I kind of want to be able to finish this at some point. Yeah, Zen Haver, tell us about that. Where did your name come from? Mm hmm. Yeah, I too wish to get away from a doctor-inspired um, handle. So, um, 
Um, how do people feel about using uh, real names, like my actual name for a stream kind of thing? Is that good or bad? I already use my name out there quite a bit for my business. And, you know, this kind of stuff is pretty fun. It'd be interesting to see what a what a good handle would be for, for me. Yeah, my stolen Valor, Valor PhD. Yep, that's that's the truth. Okay, so we have our our code guide. I also like the way that these are laid out. Like I have basically one action on every page to do, which is quite nice. That makes it so I don't have to like search the page. Yeah, I think I would probably go with um, my my Instagram handle is Grant Makes, and I think that would fit pretty well. I actually already own um, GrantMakes.com, the domain. So, anyway, yeah, I think I might switch to that at some point. The Grant Cobbler. So also because I've had weirdos online go crazy because I'm a woman with dyed hair. Aren't people just piles of crap that sucks i'm sorry yeah i was thinking about that as well just like ugh, fucking assholes sorry about that 10 beep um i'm gonna open the arduino ide <laughs> it says open the arduino ide software on your computer poke around and get to know the interface we aren't going to code right away this is this this is the setup this step to set your ID, IDE to identify your red board. Let me open up the IDE here. <laughs> Grant Harbordasher. It's me, the Harbordashery Ashery. Um, so this looks pretty standard for an IDE. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in though. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so the GUI, so Graphical User Interface, or GUI. So a, an IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, if you did not know. So A, verify, compiles and approves your code. Right there. It will catch errors in syntax like missing semicolons and parentheses. That is convenient. B is upload. Sends your code to the Redboard. When you click it, you should see the lights on your board blink rapidly. C over here is save. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm leaning more towards connecting it because I don't think there's a single person that I know that I haven't told about me loving the long dark. And that's probably the only game I'm going to play on there. And it kind of... I don't know, the Long Dark kind of fits with my brand a little bit because it's kind of about organization and knowing lots of little details and managing stuff and solitude. So, I don't know, I'm, I'll, I'm thinking about it because all of my other activities I like to do are just me pretending I'm in the Long Dark, kind of somewhat related to it at least. Um, lots to think about. So, um, Okay, so this is save over here. Then we have open, new, debug window is F. That's down here. So this um, black bar down here is the debug window. The long dark brand. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of my deal. Sketch name. D displays the name of the sketch you are currently working on. So that's G. So that is um, up here. So it says... Up here, this is sketch. There's so that's just the file name. Connection area displays the board and serial port currently selected. It's J. So down here, it says Arduino Uno. Serial monitor. K. Okay. So that's up here. It says, opens a window that displays any serial information your breadboard is transmitting. Useful for debugging. 
So select your board and serial device. Note, your SparkFun red board and Arduino Genuino, your Arduino Uno are interchangeable, but you won't find the red board listed in the Arduino software. Select Arduino slash Genuino Uno instead. So we're going to go up to tools and we're going to go to board. We're going to select Arduino slash Genuino Uno. Um, Zen, this is telling me I'm choosing Arduino slash Genuino Uno, but I'm not seeing Arduino slash Genuino on here. Is that just a translation or what is that? I think I've already got it selected, this Arduino Uno. I think that's right. So then I need to select port. Okay. So we got a problem because this guide says I should have COM51 and I don't have COM51. This is fuzzy around here. Um, so I'm not sure. Which port I need to select. It doesn't really tell me what the port is about. So it, it says to choose COM51 in the guide. And so do overhead zoom. So the guide is saying choose COM51 or COMXX. I don't have that option though, so I just choose COM1 or 3. I have those, um, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it is connected via USB and powered on. And it is blinking on um, the 13 LED. I wonder if there's debugging on the side. Um, I I didn't. It was the language is a little confusing, um, so I didn't wasn't aware that I had to. Um, so I didn't download and run this executable here um, because it kind of says like that I don't have to, but maybe I need to. But maybe I should run that executable. I think I'm gonna do it. We'll see how this goes. I'm doing it. Oh no, I'm doing things in the wrong order now. It's probably fine, right? It'll be fine. Driver install success, okay. Let's see if we have a different tune here. I'm gonna reboot the IDE. Now that I have that installed. Okay, so Zen says to just run it and see if it fails. And if it does, NBD. So I'm going to pick COM1, and then the next step it says to do is, it just says inventory of parts. So for LCD display, um, LEDs, potentiometer, switch, ultrasonic distance sensor. This could be cool. I was thinking about using this for um, like 
measuring like if I want to change the height of the lights because you want to have the lights kind of close to the plants maybe I could like have it measure the distance to the foliage or something that could be neat so Zen Haver if you haven't um, if you didn't catch it when I first started I'm hoping to eventually create a very similar project to your senior project um, which was to uh, create sort of an automated greenhouse setup that's my goal um, so we have some 10,000 ohm resistors, 33,000, 330,000 ohm resistors, a photoresistor, temperature sensor, servo motor, breadboard, breadboard, jumper wires, gear motors, piezo buzzer, motor driver, and push buttons. Let's get started with our first circuit. We're at like an hour in. Okay. Project one. This is pretty. I like how they laid this out. This is good. Um, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. So this is a very nice, I really like this booklet. Look at those hands. Look how nice the hand model was. That's a good hand model. Um, saying that and I got distracted by chat is weird. Oops. Okay, so we're gonna learn a couple things here. Let me get this situated. Get out of here, garbage. So, welcome to your first SparkFun Inventors Kit project. Each project is broken up into several circuits. The last circuit being a culmination of the technologies that came before. There are five projects total, each designed to help you learn about new technologies and concepts. The first project will set the foundation for the rest of the, for the rest and will aid in helping you understand the fundamentals of circuit building and electricity. Awesome. In project one, you will learn about light emitting diodes, LEDs, resistors, inputs, outputs, and sensors. The first project will be to build and program your very own multicolored nightlight. The night light uses a sensor to turn on RGB, red, green, blue, LED, when it gets dark, and you will be able to change the color using an input knob. Sick. This is going to be awesome. So, looks like new components introduced in this project. LEDs, resistors, potentiometers, and photoresistors. New concepts introduced will be polarity, Ohm's law, digital output, analog versus digital, analog input, analog to digital conversion, voltage divider, pulse width modulation, way to go Kyle, uh, remembering that, uh, functions, how to upload a, a program to your breadboard, circuit building basics, how to control LEDs with digital outputs, and how to read sensors with analog inputs. Okay. Do, 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 do. So I need an LED, a 330 ohm resistor, and two jumper wires. So let's get those out. So these are the 10,000 resistors. These are not labeled, but I will look at the rings, the lines later. I know a little bit about how these have like specific, um, like rings on them, right? Specific things on them that indicate how how resistance, how resistant they are. Let's look at that. Um, we need LEDs. Jumper wires. Okay. A big pile of stuff. I don't think I need this bag yet. We'll see. Okay. 
All right. Light emitting diodes are small lights made from silicone diode. From a silicone diode, they come in different colors, brightnesses, and sizes. They each have a positive leg and a negative leg. They will only let electricity flow through them in one direction. I didn't know that. Um, LEDs can also burn out if too much electricity flows through them, so you should always use a resistor to limit the current when you're wire an LED to a circuit. Resistors resist the flow of electricity. Ooh, you can look up a resistor chart. One can be found in the back of the book. Sick. Um, but you know what? When I look at this, it looks like... Oh, it's kind of hard to see. We're going to bring in the toilet. Okay, so it looks like the same the same boy right there. That's a 330 ohm resistor. I'm, you know, I'm just gonna leave that in the package. I'm gonna put away the 10,000 ohm resistor. I need two jumper wires. I'll wait and see if they tell us which colors to use. Okay, so the long side of your LED is positive. Okay. So the long side's positive. So I learned a bunch about Ohm's Law. I still haven't taken the test, but um, I've been studying for the, uh, there's our long side. I've been studying for uh, my ham radio license. Um, I've been studying for my ham radio license because I'm a huge nerd. And um, the audiobook that is for the, like, the test for it has a whole bunch about electricity, which has been really um, one of the reasons why I've been so interested in doing this project. So V voltage in volts equals amps times resistance. Okay. Digital output. When working with microcontrollers such as the breadboard, there are a variety of pins which you can connect electronic components. Knowing which pins perform which functions is important when building your circuit. In this circuit, we'll be using what is known as a digital output. There are 14 of these pins found on the breadboard. A digital output only has two states, on or off. The two states can also be thought of as high, low, high or low, true or false. That's cool. When an LED is connected to one of these pins, the pin can only perform two jobs, turning on the LED and turning off the LED. We'll explore the other pins and their functions in later circuits. So new ideas, some electrical safety. Never work on your circuits while the board is connected to a power source. The SparkFun red board operates on five volts, which, while not enough to injure you, is enough to damage the components in your circuit. Component orientation and polarity. Instructions on how to orient each of your components will be given before each circuit diagram. Many components have polarity and have only one correct orientation, while others are non-polarized. So, let's take a look at our LED again. So, flat edge. Okay, so... See if we can see this okay. So, oh, we got Godzilla walking through stairs. Um, so, let's see if we can get this better in there. So, we have our long end here, is the positive. 
And then we also have a flat edge. Ooh, we're, we bounced out of focus. Come on, camera. Uh-oh, we're super out of focus now. Um, so maybe that can get us back. Come on, please. So we're a little blurry right now. I don't know how to fix it. I'm gonna try the book method. I'm just gonna like put the autofocus ride. Or I'll need to touch it, probably. There we go. Oh. So resistor leads. Components like resistors need to have their legs bent into 90 degree angles in order to correctly fit them into breadboard sockets. Okay, that's good to know, I suppose. Ready to start hooking everything up? Check out the circuit diagram and hookup table before below to see how everything is connected. These circuit diagrams are beautiful, by the way. They're really nicely done. Um, I just like bonked my monitor with my light. Hopefully I didn't damage it. That'd be such a bummer. Let's see. Um, okay, so each circuit diagram, each circuit contains a circuit diagram, which acts as a visual aid designed to make it easier for you to, sh to see how a circuit should be built. Do, 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 do. Hookup tables. Many electronic beginners find it helpful to have a coordinate system when building their circuits. For each circuit, you'll find a hookup table that lists the coordinates for each component or wire and where they're connected in the breadboard. Breadboard or both. The breadboard has a letter combo coordinate system, just like the game Battleship. Cool. D13 to J2 means one end of a component connects to digital pin 13 on the breadboard, and the other connects to J2 on the breadboard. Okay. Is this actually what I should be doing? Oh yeah, this is what I should be doing. So I'm a little confused with this sometimes here because it kind of like tells me about how to use the system, but also is telling me to do a thing. So it can be a little confusing. So um, it also doesn't like explicitly say, hey, unplug your stuff. It did earlier, but um, so I'm gonna unplug this. So I don't have any power before I get to hooking things up. So we need two jumper wires. Zen doesn't matter what color of jumper wires I use, or is that more for me? Uh, just for my preference, or um, just use like different colors for different things? What do you think? Is there like a gold standard, like use this to connect to the Arduino and then do this for this for a sensor? Doesn't matter at all. Cool. Okay, so jumper wires. So we're basically connecting pin 13 to just to the breadboard. So let's also hook up our ground. So I'm gonna do a different color for ground. Do green for ground. Red for power. So I'm gonna connect my ground first. So this is a ground pin. Red usually is used for the plus five bolts. Black is used for ground. We're gonna switch to black. Thank you, Zen. Hey, that fits pretty good, huh? Okay, so we're gonna go I wish that was just a little, just a tinch, tinch clearer. Um, we're gonna do ground. So this ground cable is going to go to
one E. Our LED is gonna go on one and two of A with our negative on the ground side. We're gonna get out one of our resistors here. Do you typically cut cut it out of this, or how do you typically remove these? Um, you just pull it out. Oh, there we go. Oh, jeez. Bent it. I guess I need to bend it anyway, but. Zen, how do you know for a resistor? How do you know which direction it does it does it need to be? Is it is it polarized or is it non-polarized? I suppose it's it's not. It's not a diode, right? It's just a resistor, so it's Okay, just masking tape holding it. Okay. Um If you hear any like popping or other kinds of noise in the background, the water heater is on. Making all kinds of noise. Um So it just resists. Okay, so it's not not polarized then. Is there a um, best case or a best practice for having them in a certain direction or not? Or do people kind of put them in however? This is gonna go between F and E on row two. Oh, nice, cool. Just slap them in. Um, so we're gonna connect to two. Um, so we're doing uh, two J is hot, and it's going to pin thirteen. Okay, that's all set up. Only possible consideration is for aesthetics. Got a bunch of them lined up in a row. That's a good. I'm a big fan of uh, considering aesthetics. That's great. Okay. How's this music? Is this is this the right mood? Is it, are you guys feeling it? Okay, connect the USB. Ah, shit. Stuff's happening. It's Blinky Boy. Music is appropriate? Cool. I'm hacking in! Sorry, I had to make that joke one time. Um, I'm gonna put these resistors back in their baggie. Oh, should I just like flip it around? No, I shouldn't. Hair is kind of bad. I need to get a shorter build hat. I'm doing this. I have a multitude of hats um, within arm's reach, almost always. So maybe I should switch. We're gonna do that. We're gonna switch to this is a shorter build hat. There. That should be less of an less of an overhead issue. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna open up in our IDE. <laughs> uh, yeah, I kind of have a problem. I really like hats. Okay, we're going to examples. SIK. The saying to go to below Arduino ISP. So starter kit, basic kit. Did I need to import this? I have I have three hats within three hats within arm's reach. Um, 
There's a fourth one over there that's even sillier. I think I'd probably own 20 hats easily. So I'm not seeing the SIK guidebook in here. Which is annoying because it's supposed to be built in. Tem Tembu, you have a relative in here. Or Tembeep, you have a relative named Tembu. Yeah, it does seem like I'm missing the SIK sketches. I downloaded them though, so maybe I need to just like open the... Um, where are my downloads? found it. Okay, Sparkfin Inventor's Kit. That's what SIK stands for. Turns an LED connected to the pin 13 on and off for Beats Forever. This sketch was written by Sparkfin Electronics. That's cool. So, flash on for two seconds, off for two seconds. Okay. Program overview. One. Turn the LED on by sending power 5 volts digital pin 13. Wait 2 seconds, so... So that's the output. Pin 13. Pin mode. Okay. So, they said you could use high and low as well as true and false for these pins, for the digital pins. So delay, 2000, okay. Used to that. Well, okay, that's easy. So we could do counter, if we can just like, verified. I'm just gonna compile this. 932 bytes of storage space. does its thing or if it fails this is the first test that we were talking about Zen still at two seconds I probably skipped some steps we'll see I should read some more I got excited So it's saying setup and loop. Each Arduino program needs two functions. Code that goes between the curly brackets of setup runs once. Code in between loop runs over and over again until redboard is reset or powered off. Before you can use one of the digital one of the digital pins, you'll need to tell the redboard whether or not input or output. We'll use the built-in function called pin mode to make pin 13 the digital output. You'll learn more about digital inputs in project two. So it's still uploading. So when you're using a pin as an output, using a pin as an output, you can command it to be high, output five volts, or low, output zero, zero volts. Delay is in milliseconds. And then comments, this looks like pretty typical comments. Used to that. Okay, so we're going to, oh, 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 program's not responding. So AVR dude. Hmm. 
Okay. Uh, all right. So, before I do any other code stuff, we gotta figure this out, huh? Programmer is not responding. So it has a couple error codes. Most likely causes you're on the wrong board selected in the Arduino IDE. Make sure I have Arduino Uno selected, which I believe I do. Arduino Uno. Done. Try swapping COM boards. And then upload again. Hey, done uploading. Sick. Good idea, Zen. We're now at a five second on, two seconds off. All right. Way to go, team. All right, so let's, let's putz around with this a little bit. So let's do some, let's do an SOS. Um, so long, 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 short, short, short. Nope. Short, 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 long, 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 short, short, short. That's SOS, right? Oh, uh, let's write something else. Let's something, write something vaguely lewd in Morse code. What should we, what should we have it say in Morse code? Gang. I'm thinking, um, um, maybe like, uh, poop would be a good, uh, contender. Might be kind of a funny word to say. Um, yeah, <laughs> good. Yep. Let's do it. So, short, long, long, short, long, 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 short, long, long, short. Okay, so let's try and do this. I'm actually gonna move my keyboard a little bit closer because I don't like having to reach so far. Um, are there... I'm gonna do poop because it's the same. I can just like copy some junks. So let's do a short as one second. So that's just a just a quick blink. Actually, let's do let's do 500. This is our short. So, <laughs> no, it'll be fine. It's maybe, yeah, you're uh, possibly it's okay. Um, so we're going to do, um, P in So we're going to do that. So, oh God. Um, actually, let's do this short. I did say vaguely lewd. So let's copy this. Long. you mind so so two longs so short long long short is the letter P um, question for Zen Haver 
What do we do with tabs? Are tabs a thing? Can I tab in or can I not have things be tabbed in to make nested kind of things? So let's test this letter P. Okay, so we're watching it. So, short, long, 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 short. Tabs are treated the same as white space. Awesome. So I'm gonna do, ooh. I think this is a skip song. We're gonna skip this. Okay. So the O's were long, long, long. Longs are a bit too long, okay. We'll change those. We'll, we'll cut them in half. So we need three longs. I think we need another delay. Time, time. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right, you're right, Zen. So we should do This should be, we'll do 100, 100. That's gonna be pretty fast, Kyle. Um, we're gonna do it, we're gonna try it out. This is good practice for me just for keeping this stuff straight. Um, so I'm just going to replace it. Oh, let's fix this. I'm going to add another delay between each word. So we're going to do thousand. Okay. Grab the long here. Grab the long again. We're almost ready. Totally mature thing to do. I didn't uh, comment and label the letters, which is not very good of me, but verify the code. Thing looks rad. Upload. Right. Here we go. Okay. O O P. Oh, I forgot to put a delay at the very end. Let's do that.
for um, okay I'm gonna make this five seconds <sighs> okay so it's uploading O P take a break P O O P sick all right thanks team that was good to learn okay We're going to save that. Nine thirty-nine. Okay, we got that working. Okay. On to potentiometer. How's everybody doing? Are we hanging in there? This is actually taking a long time. Yeah. Take just a second here. See what is all going on. All right. Cool. On to potentiometer. I'm gonna stretch a little bit. <laughs> the next product has some real potential. I like that. It's important to stretch as you're doing this kind of stuff. Otherwise, you will ruin your body forever. Shake it out. Okay. I need an LED. What does I need? I need an LED. Okay, so I'll just read this description quick. Potentiometers, also known as trim pots or knobs, <laughs> uh, or knobs, are one of the basic inputs for electronic devices. By tracking the position of the knob with your redboard, you can make volume controls, speed controls, angle sensors, and a ton of other useful inputs for your projects. In this circuit, you use a potentiometer as an input device to control the speed at which your LED blinks. Okay, so I need to get the potentiometer out. Three pin potentiometer is a three pin variable resistor. When powered with five volts, the middle pin outputs a voltage between 0 volts and 5 volts, depending on the position of the knob on the potentiometer. Internal to the trim pot is a single resistor and a wiper. What's a wiper? Which cuts the resistor in two and moves to adjust the ratio between both halves. Zen, could you um, provide any additional... What is a wiper? Exactly. Also, do you use potentiometers in your work? Hey, is that Wilder? Thanks for joining. Well, I try and cram my brain through this project, try and get it to work. Okay. Do, 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 do. analog inputs. Okay. So, I spit on this a little bit. So, we live in an analog world, there's an infinite number of colors to paint an object, an infinite number of tones we can hear, and an infinite number of smells we can smell. Yeah. Uh, common thing among these analog signals is their infinite possibilities. Digital signals deal in the realm of discrete or finite, meaning there is a limited set of values they can be. The LED from the previous circuit had only two states it could exist in, on or off, when connected to a digital output. Analog inputs, so far, we only dealt with the outputs. The redboard also has inputs. Both inputs and outputs can be analog or digital, based on our previous definition of analog and digital. That means that an analog input can sense a wide range of values versus a digital input, which can only sense two values, or states. Cool. Um, Zenhaver says, the wiper is like this piece of metal that's sweeping along the resistor inside of the potentiometer that's changing the resistance inside dynamically. Cool. When you turn the switch, turn the knob, 
uh, it's moving the wiper inside the trim pot. We definitely use potentiometers all the time at work. Cool. All right. Uh, you may have noticed that some pins labeled digital and some labeled analog in on your redboard. Okay, you see it? There's, um, if we look real close here, um, this whole section here says analog, written sideways. Um, so, voltage dividers. Simple circuits that turn some voltage into a smaller voltage using two resistors. A potentiometer is a variable, variable resistor that can be used to create an adjustable voltage divider. A wiper in the middle position means the output voltage will be half of the input. Voltage dividers will be covered in more detail in the next circuit. Okay, hookup guide. So step one is unplug this thing. Um, there's no like ceremony in unplugging it. I don't have to do anything on the computer side or on this side, right, Zen? Okay, so so we're gonna change a couple of these things. I'm gonna remove these for now. So this ground is still the ground that I want. Okay, so no ceremony that needs to happen. I wish that was in better focus. That's like just a blurry disaster, isn't it, gang? Siri. So. Let's see here. Okay. So there's our ground there. So it says to put our ground to the right negative rail on the breadboard so it needs to go up here at the very top okay then our five volt positive needs to go in there needs to go to the other rail in the breadboard, so right there. This makes me concerned that these things are so close to one another, one another, but you know, I think I just gotta get used to it. That's what it says to do. So the next wire, a yellow wire, says to do the pin 13 thing. So we're gonna connect that to pin 13. I'm gonna move my hat to the side. Can see. Oh yeah, I almost put that in the wrong one. So that's pin 13, and that's going to go all the way over to um, so 2J. It's going to go to 2J over there. Yep, 2J. So let's see what that's doing. So that's. confusing me a little bit. Um, but we're gonna roll with it. I do like this uh, guide has. I think that's great. That's a great idea, Vidi Kruger. I like it. At the very least, that should be the name for a bar in a cyberpunk world uh, role-playing game. We're going to go to, um, it says to connect this blue wire. I'm going to show you the guide here. So, nope, maybe I'll do this. Yeah, okay. So it's saying it's pin 13 with yellow over to 2J, connecting the five volt and the ground through these rails on the side. And this goes all the way through my 
um, uh, through to, and I guess pin 13 would provide power when it's running. <laughs> A bar slash bowling alley. Um, so it goes through the resistor, through the LED, and then back to the negative. Connecting this blue wire to analog zero, um, which is analog one, I'm, I'm assuming, um, in zero-based numbering, I'm guessing. That's what that is. Then I'm connecting the positive and the negative to this rail here. I'm going to continue doing that. <laughs> no one will get your joke, is what you're saying. But then, Vec, you'd have to explain your joke. How terrible would that be? So let me get myself sorted here. Okay, so analog zero is right there. So I'm going to plug that in. Analog zero, blue, goes to... Oh, we forgot to take out our photoresistor. Or our potentiometer. Excuse me. Okay, we got, we forgot to grab a part. We need our potentiometer. Maybe it's in this bag. I'm going to give them this LED one. No. Nice. Zero-based indexing. That took me a while to get that worked out in my brain. Thank you, Zen, for teaching me that. Okay, here we go. Had to learn zero-based indexing for something. I can't remember what, but... So, for those who don't know, zero-based indexing is basically computers like to start counting with zero instead of one. This is, like, the best quick version. Um, I did find my potentiometer. I'll zoom in on it in a second. So here's the potentiometer here. Little arrow on it, and the dial moves. So the potentiometer goes to let's see. So C25, 26, and 27. So C. 25, 26, and 27. Okay, got that plugged in. Now, center pin goes to the analog input, which makes sense to me. So that means center pin is... This one here. Get another hot wire. This is going to go to the rail at the bottom. Positive rail, and this goes into this one right next to it. I'm using the camera to be able to see where this is. Come on, baby, go in there. Okay, we need another ground wire. these songs they're good enjoying them so that's the ground and then we'll put this in to the rail over here as well now, it actually looks like I put this maybe into the wrong one let's see nope 
we're good. Okay. So, this is all hooked up there. This is all hooked up up here, so using the same resistor. There's our LED. Plugged into our power over there, as well as the ground analog input zero and pin 13. Okay. Let's see what we can do with this. So this looks all, all looks good. Okay, connect the redboard to USB port computer and then open the sketch. And put this in. Doing some flashies. Okay, what you should see. You should see the LED blink faster or slower in accordance with your potentiometer. The delay between each flash will change based on the position of the knob. If it isn't working, make sure you have assembled the circuit correctly and verified and uploaded the code to your board. If that doesn't work, see the troubleshooting guide. So I need to open up the sketch first. So we're going to go to picture in picture here. Almost closed OBS by accident. Open this up. Here's our potentiometer code. I'm going to ship it. Hit upload. Currently uploading. Done uploading. Okay. So nothing is happening. Hmm. Missing a ground connection to the LED. Let's look at this again. I'm going to unplug it. Check my wiring diagram. Thank you, Zen. I was, I was confused. You're right. Oh, I get it. Because the channel is down the center, and there's no power going across the channel. So I need to get the power across the channel for that to work. I did forget a black wire. Good eye. Wow, you're good at that. I'm impressed. So I need to connect, um, looks like negative on three, which it won't matter, it wouldn't matter what it comes from because everything along there is, is a ground. I'm gonna go to one E, sorry about the hat. Okay, cool. So I think that looks about right. A little dark, um, so I don't have the light on. But okay, so let's let's plug it in and upload again. We are getting some blinkage. Cool, that's rad. I love how fast it can go. Also, it's interesting how there's like that slight delay. Maybe. It's fun getting it to like flash so fast I can barely see it. Oh, that's kind of hurts my eyes to stare at that. Whoops. Okay, cool. So let's look at this program. Thank you, Zen, for helping out there. So, int pot position. Variable hold value based on the position of the potentiometer. So is, does int mean... Um, so that's integer pot position. Okay. So am I just declaring a variable up here? I'm not like stating anything specific, I'm just stating the variable. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it says between um, 
from 0 to 1023. Okay, serial begin. Start a serial, serial connection with the computer. And when it says with the computer, is it referring to the Arduino or my computer that's controlling the code? Probably not my computer, it's, it's talking about the Arduino. So, this is the setup again. So, this is saying, I'm not sure what this really is telling me here. Like, why why do I need to do the serial begin? Is it just establishing it? Like, anytime you have a, uh, like, where you're trying to control something with an input, you have to begin at a certain number? Like, what's causing that? It's opening a serial connection with your actual computer through the USB cable. Oh, okay. Why is it doing it for this circuit if it's just being controlled through the potentiometer? That seems weird. Anyway. I'm gonna take a drink while I think about that. And maybe Zen is furiously typing. If he's not, that's okay too though. Kind of putting you on the spot there, buddy. Okay, read the position of the pot. Set the pot position. Okay, so it's probably establishing the serial connection so you can open the monitor window and read the value being printed via the print function in the loop. Oh. Where am I seeing that though? Is there a console? Weird. It's probably going to tell me that soon, I bet. Okay. That's cool. So it's just delaying by pop position. That's cool. So could I write some kind of function? Tools. Serial plotter? Serial monitor. Hey, 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 that's cool. Zing. Ah, oh, sick. That's super cool. So if I wanted to like add a zero to this, like if I, if this potentiometer wasn't slowing it down enough or speeding it up enough, could I just write some kind of function to add, um, add something to the pot position variable? Like say like add another thousand milliseconds. Serial monitor is incredibly useful to, for debugging. It just prints, print things. Um, I didn't mean to stutter so much on the the language. The language. Print shit with the while well, program is running. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That seems hella useful. I wonder if you can combine variables here. Like, set a variable at, like, extra second and then do pop position plus extra second or something. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's how, it says in this next step here um, to check out the serial monitor. Numeric values. So, okay, so I see. Interesting. 
You can do arithmetic right in the function cell. Yeah, I was gonna ask about that too. So, it's in serial monitor. So when I had it a little bit slower, it only reported it seemingly at that interval. Whereas when I speed it up, it's like reporting those numbers like hella fast. What's going on there? Look in the loop function. Good idea. Oh yeah, okay. So it's the serial print in pop position. Pop position equals analog read. Kind of is making sense a little bit. It must be reporting at a rate equal to the value, so when it reports low numbers, there's also a length of time between each report. It's only printing the serial monitor at the same rate. Okay. Yeah, but it doesn't say it's writing anything in the low position either. Neat. Um, we're just going to finish up this one, and then I'll probably be done for the night here in a little bit. I want to keep going, but I've got to work tomorrow morning and stuff. Um, okay, so it says code to note. Serial commands can be used to send and receive data from your computer. Line of code tells Redboard that we want to begin that communication with the computer. Same way we would say hi. The baud, baud rate, B-A-U-D rate. Zen Haver, this is another one for you. What's the baud rate mean? B-A-U-D. Oh, so A, A0 is the pin that we're using, okay. So it says here, um, for the serial print, this is the line that actually prints the trim pot value to the monitor. It takes the variable pot position and prints the value, whatever value it equals at the moment of the in the loop. The, oh, okay. So um, the reason why it's, um, um, go away, I don't wanna show you. Um, so it looks like every time it completes the loop it prints, is that what it's saying? And because of, um, yeah, that's the baud rate is the way the speed the two devices communicate. Um, I think Kyle, to answer your question, because if it if we slow down the loop by delaying in the pop position here, so we're delaying each of the blinks. Now it, it slows down the loop and then slows down the print. Okay, that's cool. I understand now. And multiply the sensor readings of Legos. Try multiplying, dividing, or adding to your sensor readings so that you can change the range or delay within your code. So it's actually challenging me to, to do what I meant. Um, it also said to add more LEDs to my circuit. Don't forget current limiting resistors. You will need to declare the new pins in your code and set them all to the output. So that's pin 13 is the output. Okay. So I think I'll mess with this next time. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to complete 
Um, should we um, should we complete this project? I have one more circuit to do, which would probably take another 20 minutes or so, or should we save that for next week? What do you, what do y'all think? We're pretty close to being able to get done with this first project, which would be nice to do. Would, it, would one or two of you want to stick around a little bit longer? I think we might do it. Then Ever's going to go to bed. Okay. I think that I'm going to wait until next week. So I think I'm going to call that a stream. Um, I'm going to leave this on the page that I'm on here. That was super cool. Um, thanks for joining. Um, this has been a blast working on this. Um, so I'm going to be doing this stream once a week. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I should probably be done. Like I'm a little full up, just like getting the setup and getting all this stuff. I kind of wouldn't mind stopping right now. So I think, I think I'm going to call it, call it quits. Um, Thank you, V.E. Kruger. Yeah, I'm going to be doing this every week at 8 o'clock on Sunday. Um, I'm still going to be doing my long dark streams tomorrow and Tuesday. Actually, um, note for tomorrow's long... Tuesday's long dark stream? Yeah, Tuesday's long dark stream. I have to attend a meeting um, for something like right at 6 or right before 7 or something like that, 6.50 or something. So I'm going to be delaying the start of my stream just a little bit on Tuesday. Uh, maybe by an hour. Um, so, um, I want to become famous. Get out of here. Thanks, Vigor. Um, so, a little delayed on, on Tuesday, but tomorrow I'm going to be streaming The Long Dark at 7. So, um, I will see you folks then. And, um, yeah, thanks for joining me. This is a lot of fun. Have a good night.